Hey everyone, in today's video, I'm going to be trying out Adobe Firefly. It's a new AI tool which was recently released by Adobe not too long ago. And I've been fortunate enough to be able to get early access to this tool. And I'm going to be trying out some of its new capabilities and see how well it can actually be integrated into our work. So without further ado, let's dive right into the video. Awesome, so this is the landing page for Adobe Firefly. As you can see, it's still in its beta form, so it's not completely finished. And you may notice under here with its capabilities, which we'll be exploring closer on, there's a lot of areas where it's still in exploration, so we cannot access those. But in the meantime, for this video, I'll be trying out text to image, generated fill, and also text effects. If you wanna learn more about the beta, you can click on this call to action button here. And if you wanna log in, all you need to do is sign in with your Adobe account and that should hopefully get you in. So I'm gonna do that right now. Awesome, so I've just logged in now and now we can start exploring some of its capabilities. So what we might do is explore the text to image capability. So for this part of the video, I'm just gonna explore exactly what it can do. And then at the end of the video, I'll see how well it can integrate into a user interface design. So we are loaded up with a community hub of some of the images which have been generated, which is really cool. And as you can see at the bottom of the page, there's an input here. And this is where your prompt can go for the AI generation. So once you have your prompt, then all you need to do is just hit enter or you can click on generate and that's what I'm gonna do now. So click on generate. What happens here is it starts to generate the images for you and you'll soon see the images generate here and here they are. These are looking absolutely insane. As you can see, Adobe has done insanely well in the AI department and it's gonna be really exciting to see what else they can release. So as part of the Adobe Firefly, um, you can see as well that the aspect ratio, you can actually change it to a particular size. Say for example, if you wanted to create, I don't know, a desktop background image, you can do that yourself by clicking on the 16 by nine. This changes the aspect ratio completely and it gives us much more flexibility in some of the creations it comes up with. And as you can see, these look absolutely insane. Another amazing feature that Adobe has is you can notice here that they have a whole range of styles you can look at. We have things like digital art, synth wave, palette knife, and so on. For this example, let's say if we didn't really enjoy this type of style, since as you can see, the default here is set to art. What I'm gonna do is deselect that. So I'll just delete that. And I'm going to click on, let's try Synthwave and see what happens. So if we generate that again, let it load. So as you can see, these are the results which have just loaded. And these are absolutely insane. Um, the fact that you are able to select a particular style for your prompt is really crazy and cool for Adobe to implement. And this is something that can really push the boundaries in thinking about or coming up with designs for your user interface designs and people outside of UI design who are into graphic design and other sorts of art forms, this is a really good way to sort of generate ideas of what you could actually come up with in your own profession. Um, so yeah, those are some of the capabilities for text to image. And yeah, I can't wait to see what else Adobe will be releasing as Adobe Firefly continues to um, move forward. So that is the text to image. The next part of the video is I'm going to be exploring the generative fill and I'm going to see how powerful it really is. So I'm just going to click on that. And what you can do is you can actually upload your own image, but for the sake of this video, I'm just going to play with this one here, this nice looking lighthouse here. So I'm just going to click on this. And what generative fill does is there's three different options here. You have insert where you can put in or highlight in a particular spot and you can actually type in a prompt you want. So for example, a boat in the ocean, I'll hit enter. And what this does is it actually generates um, an object for you automatically without you having to physically do it. This is an absolute game changer from Adobe. And as you can see underneath here, you can also change what item you'd like there to be. 
So it's not just one particular asset, but you can also have a whole range of different types um, and to the point where you can find one that you actually like. So for the sake of this video, I'm just gonna click on this one. And once you're happy with that, all you need to do is select keep. So that's the first um, part of the generator field, which is really cool. You might also add in some birds perhaps. Let's type in um, birds, hit enter, wait for it to generate. And as you can see, we have some birds here. Um, I might stick with this one for the sake of it. And that's looking really, really cool. Another cool thing, and for the second option, which the generator fill is associated with, it has this remove option here. What this does is it allows the user to actually remove particular objects within the image. So for the sake of this one, I'm just gonna highlight over the bird as well as the boat and see if it brings back the original image we started off with. So come over to remove and let's see what happens. So as you can see, it has been completely removed. And another cool feature, similar to the insert, you have multiple options for you to explore. If you're not particularly happy with the first option, you can always change to something else. But for the sake of this video, I'm pretty happy with that. So I'll just click on keep. And then the third option is just panning the canvas in a particular position where you wanna work with it. So those are some of the capabilities for generate fill. And it's definitely something that I can see a lot of photographers and artists will definitely incorporate, as well as some UI designers. Um, who want to implement or have certain um, imagery in their mobile applications and so forth. So that's really cool. Um, let's move out of that. Awesome, another feature involved is the text effects. So I'm gonna click on that now. It should load the page up, just give it some time to load. Here we are. And we have come across a whole community of images which have been generated by people within the Adobe community. And these look absolutely amazing. Um, definitely worth looking into this if you're a graphic designer. Um, so for the sake of this video, let's type a prompt. Let's see how well it can really generate these really cool typography effects. So for the sake of this video, I'm gonna type in create a colorful word filled with lollies. And after doing that, I'm just gonna hit on generate. And what happens here is it starts to do the same process of actually generating that image and let's see what it's capable of producing. Here we are, these designs are looking incredible, like really, really cool. Another cool feature again is you can change the style um, or the type. So let's try this one and see what happens. That's looking really, really cool. Another cool feature as well is if you're not happy with this one, they do have some sample prompts that you can look at. So we have things like flowers, snakes, balloons, whatever you want. Um, and if we scroll down, there's also these um, different typography uh, properties you can change. So things like the match shape. So let's try type, for example, and see what happens. So if I've, so I've clicked on type and that should hopefully change the typography. Yep, that looks a lot different. You can also change the font as well, which is really cool. Um, let's change it completely. Maybe try this one here. Yep, that looks really, really cool. Another cool feature is they do have background colors at the bottom right corner here. So say if we wanted a red background or a purple one or a blue one or whatever you have, or we can just set it to transparent for the sake of this video, um, which is really cool. This is awesome. And another cool thing that you can do is rather than just having Firefly as your word, you can actually customize it. So let's just type in hello. In this instance, it's regenerating um, the prompt that we had to match this word being hello. And there you go. We have this really cool looking letter effect. I can imagine this is probably something I wouldn't use much as a user interface designer, but definitely worth looking into this if you're a graphic designer and want to explore um, typography ideas and sort of getting an idea of some of the capabilities that can come out of using AI. So this is really cool. So for the next part of this video, I'm gonna be going back into text to image and I'm gonna see how well it can be integrated into our Figma workflow as user interface designers. So if we go into our Figma file, you see I've created these two templates. The first one is a uh, desktop screen and the other is a mobile screen. All I'm gonna do is simply put the image in the background and I just wanna see how effective it looks um, as a user interface designer, because I can imagine that using Adobe Firefly will make our designs look absolutely insane. So let's get straight into that right now. Um, so what I'm gonna do is go back into text to image. 
And the exact same thing as the beginning of this video, I am gonna describe the image that I wanna have. For the sake of this user interface, I wanna give it an AI theme. So with that in mind, I'm gonna type in the prompt, generate an image of a striking, dark and minimalistic AI inspired robot in the middle of a forest. I might change robot to a robot's face in the middle of the forest. Click on generate. And again, the same thing will happen. Since I'm doing it in desktop, I wanna change the aspect ratio to 16 by nine. And we'll keep it as art because I think art looks quite nice. And let's see what it comes up with. Amazing, so these are some of the images it generated and these look absolutely insane. What I might do is actually use uh, this image here. I quite like this one. And once you're happy with an image, what you can actually do, another cool feature that's involved in Adobe Firefly, if you come to the top left, you'll see this little icon here. What it does is it allows you to see similar images to this one. So what I'll do is I'll click on that. And what happens is it generates three more images similar to this one here. And let's see what it comes up with. These look absolutely insane. And I'm absolutely in love with this one here. This one just looks really, really cool. And once you're happy with it, what you can do is actually just download it here. So I'm just gonna click on that now. And it'll ask you to accept this content credential, which will be included as part of the beta. So what you wanna do is just hit continue. Um, and that will apply those properties onto the image. What I'm gonna do now is come back into Figma and I'm gonna import the image over. So I've just imported the image and here it is. It's looking really, really cool. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna grab it and just drag it into the background here. And I'm just gonna place it directly in the center of the frame. And I'll just fix that up. And what we can do is we can actually scale it up to a size we're happy with. That looks really cool. Maybe bring it up a bit and there you go. That looks absolutely insane. Imagine seeing this in a user interface design for a desktop. That's just incredible. Looking really, really cool. And again, like I was saying before with the aspect ratios, you can actually change it to a size to fit a mobile screen. So in this case, we're gonna try three by four and see how it goes. And as you can see, we have some really cool examples here. I think I might just use this one here. And once you're happy with the design, do the exact same thing to save the image, continue with the credentials, let it load. And what I'll do now is go back into Figma and I'll place the image. There's the image. What we can do now is put it into our mobile view, put it into the background. And then what we can do is change the sizing of it to a size we are happy with. That looks really, really cool. Awesome, so what we have now is we have a desktop view using Adobe Firefly as the background image and also a mobile view with Adobe Firefly again as the background image. So that's basically the end of the video. I hope you guys enjoyed that. Um, so if you wanna see more content related to AI front end development or UX UI design, um, please subscribe to my channel. I do try to upload as much as I can, but in the meantime, if you do have any questions, please let me know in the comments below and I will catch you all in the next video. See you later.